resistors in series and in parallel. The objectives to investigate the series and parallel combinations of resistors. Ohm's law operators, voltmeter to measure potential difference, cable, universal circuit board, DC power source, electrical resistors, and a meter to measure the current. Series circuit resistors connected in line. Voltage added up to equal the total. Current is the same throughout. Resistance added up to equal the total. Barrel circuit have component arranged in separate loops. Total current sum of current and total voltage equal the same for each resistance. Equivalent resistance equal reciprocal sum of resistance. We'll have two unknown resistors. We will measure each of them exactly like what we did in Ohm's law. Then we will connect them in a method called series connection. And then we will measure the equivalent resistance for these two resistors in uh, this uh, type of connection. Then we will connect the same two resistors in parallel and measure the equivalent resistance for these two resistors when they are connected in parallel. So in the first step, we will measure the value of the first unknown resistance exactly like what we did in Ohm's law. So we will connect the same circuit, a power supply. With unknown resistance, this time we will call it R1. We connect the ammeter to measure the current here. And the voltmeter in order to measure the voltage across the two terminals of the resistance. Then we measure five values of voltage one, two, three, four, five, and the corresponding values of current. Then we draw a straight line. We use these five points from this table, V on the y-axis, the current on the x-axis, and these five points will represent a straight line. The points are not necessarily exactly on the line, since there's some experimental error, like this. And the slope of this straight line represents the value of the resistance R1. So this is the first step in this experiment. And as you can see, this first step in this experiment is exactly what we did in the previous experiment. Then, in the next step, the second step, we repeat this thing again, but we replace this resistance by another resistance called R2. So I remove this resistance. I connect another resistance called R2, like this. So this is the second unknown resistance R2. And we repeat the experiment again. We measure five values for voltage and current. From these values, we put the five points on the graph here. V on the y-axis, the current on the x-axis. Then we draw this the straight line. The slope of this straight line represents the value of the, unknown, the second unknown resistance, R2. So uh, these two steps are exactly repeating what we did in Ohm's law, but twice. One time for the resistance R1, a second time for the resistance R2. Now we have the values of R1 and R2. Now let's connect these two resistors in step 3 
in series. This is what we mean by the series connection. The resistors should be connected like this. So this is exactly the same previous circuit. But instead of having one resistance here between the two terminals of the voltmeter, we have the two resistors connected in series, like this, like a chain. Now, after connecting the circuit using the two resistors connecting in series, we repeat the same steps. We draw, uh, we, we measure five values for voltage and current, and we draw a straight line from these five values. The slope of this straight line represents the value of the equivalent resistance of both resistors when they are connected in series. Now there's a mathematical rule to calculate the value of this uh, series equivalent resistance, which is Rs equals R1 plus R2. In fact, we have the values of R1 and R2 from the first two steps. The value of R1 is the slope of the straight line we get in step one. R2 is the slope of the straight line we get in step two. We can add them up to get the value of Rs. But this is a calculated value. When we use this formula to calculate, this is the calculated value. But now by doing the experiment, by measuring five, five values VI, 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 then drawing this straight line, calculating the slope of this straight line. Here, we, this is the measured value. And the measured value and the calculated value are supposed to be, ideally they must be the same, but because of experimental error, they will be not exactly the same, but they must be very close to each other, very close values. And you need in your lab report to compare these two values, whether they are close or not. Okay, now in the next step, we repeat all what we did here, but connecting the two resistors in parallel. This is how the resistors are connected in parallel. So this is the same circuit, exactly the same circuit. But the two resistors are not connected in series as a chain. They, they are connected above each other. This type of connection is called the uh, parallel connection. And for this parallel connection, also there's, there is a formula for calculating the equivalent resistance in case of parallel. The equivalent resistance equals multiplying R1 by R2, dividing R, uh, over the sum of R1 plus R2. So if you use the values of R1 and R2, you get in uh, step 1 and step 2, substituting them in this formula, you will get the calculated value for the equivalent resistance in parallel. This is the calculated value. Now we do this experiment after connecting this circuit. We measure five different values of voltage and the corresponding values of the current in the table, VI, VI, VI. From this, uh, this table, we draw the five points, connect the five points with the best straight line. Then we calculate the slope of this line. The slope of this line represents the equivalent resistance in when they are connected in parallel. And what you get here is the measured value. And again, this calculated value and this measured value must be very close to each other. Ideally, they must be the same. But because of experimental errors, as I said, they will be very close, not exactly the same. So these are the four steps. We have measured R1, we measured R2, we measured what is their equivalent when they are connected in series and what is their equivalent when they are connected in parallel and since the calculated value and measured values are close this means this formula is correct because the experiment proved that this result is correct so in this experiment you need to draw four straight lines 
and calculate the slope of each of these four uh, straight lines but we will ask you to draw the four straight lines on the same graphing paper so do not graph each line on a separate page you should put all the four lines on one page like this so this is the line you get in step one for r1 this is the line you get in step two for line two this is the line you get for step three when resistors are connected in series and this is the line you get when resistors are connected in parallel here here you notice we need we need in fact the four lines on the same graph because we need you to notice something that the slope of the series resistance is the largest slope while the slope of the parallel equivalent resistance is the smallest slope which means connecting resistors in series will increase the value of the resistance while connecting two resistors in parallel will decrease the value of the equivalent resistance since the slope is here is the smallest slope and this is the largest slope and the slopes of the t these two lines represent the values of r1 and r2 so this is uh, the theoretical part of this experiment and uh, let's now go uh, and see how this experiment can be uh, done uh, experimentally in the lab and how we connect the circuit and take the readings okay so uh, i will start now the practical part of this experiment and uh, this is the setup we are familiar with this is copy paste the setup for ohm's law the power supply the two uh, multimeters one is used to measure the current the other is used to measure the voltage and the resistance is connected here with the breadboard and I will now turn on this power supply and start the readings for the first resistance so I will start the readings now I will adjust the voltage okay the voltage reads 0 0.6 volts and the ammeter reads 60 milliamperes increase the voltage again the voltage is now 1 volt and the reading of the ammeter is 100 milliamperes then I increase the voltage to 1.4 volts the current is 140 milliamperes then I increase the voltage the fourth reading to 2.2 volts 2.2 volts 220 milliamperes and finally the fifth reading 3.1 volts and 310 milliamperes okay now I will go to the next resistance so what I will do I will turn off the power supply turn the voltage to zero remove this resistance connect the other resistance in the same place now turn on the power start the readings from the beginning so I will adjust the first reading the voltage is 0.5 volts and the current is 120 milliamperes I increase the voltage again 1.3 volts and 280 milliamperes third reading 1.8 volts with 390 milliamperes fourth reading 2.8 volts with 610 milliamperes and the last reading is 4.3 volts with a current of 930 milliamperes power supply off now I connect both resistors in parallel like this now both resistors are connected in parallel as you can see 
then I will repeat the procedure again. Voltage set to zero, power supply on, start readings. First reading, the voltage is 0.8 volts and the current is 270 milliamperes. Second reading, 1.5 volts the voltage, 460 milliamperes the current. Third reading, 1.9 volts and 590 milliamperes. Fourth reading, 3 volts, exactly 3 volts, with 960 milliamperes. 950 milliamperes then the last reading is 4.5 volts with 1.43 amperes or 1430 milliamperes okay now we should go to the fourth part turn the power supply off now in order to connect these resistors in series, I will do the following. I will move this to the other square here in order to put this second resistance in series with the other one. Now they are connected in series like this and I will repeat the procedure again for both resistors connected in series. So I will turn the power supply on the first reading now is 0.8 volts with 60 milliamperes. Second reading 1.4 volts with 90 milliamperes. Third, third reading 2.9 volts and 200 milliamperes current fourth reading 4.5 volts and 300 milliamperes and the last reading is 6.1 volts the current the corresponding current is 410 milliamperes now I will fill all this data in the table in the manual. I will show this table in the video, inshallah.